Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Movie Night here on the Anorax Entertainment Podcast. I am your host, Sammy Ramirez, and today we are talking about the new film by John Krasinski, A Quiet Place Part 2. Um, really hyped to talk about this. I saw it earlier today um, in a movie theater. It was wonderful. I had a great time. Um, super excited to talk about it. And I'm here today with my guest, Dom Martino. Dom, how are you doing today? Sammy, again, I mean, I'm telling you, the movies are back. Bigger, stronger, faster than ever. Uh, we have kicked this COVID-19 thing. It's a beautiful thing to be back into the theater. I am excited to talk about this film. I have a lot of thoughts on it. Did my non-spoiler review a little bit earlier. You guys can go check that out as well. Uh, but this is the spoiler talk, and I'm hyped. So, yeah, no, same. I, I think I kind of just want to get into it. I mean, we both obviously love the first one. Um, I recently rewatched it. I know you did as well. Um, and I'm really kind of, I wasn't planning on it, but I'm glad that I did because there are some things I don't think I would have remembered or picked up on, but I definitely did having just rewatched it. And I think mm -hmm. that really helped my viewing experience. Um, yeah, it's like the the big thing was that uh, that so the first film starts with that uh, like traffic light on the ground and it's like completely de broken, destroyed, surrounded by rubble right. um, because the town has been destroyed. And this film starts with I'm going to assume this exact same traffic light, but a zoom in on the traffic light and it's still working. It's still up on um on the street and it starts at green and then it goes to yellow and then it goes to red mm -hmm. and then it stays at red the entire time and then we move in um on john krasinski's character um things like that i would not have picked up on that i would not have remembered that but i yeah. it, i i say that though just just say that like i john krasinski's an incredible filmmaker <laughs> with just like yeah. flat out yeah who'd have thought he, he is f phenomenal this the script the yeah. directing the use of sound like the, every single thing about this movie is so master class to me like it's 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 a master class in filmmaking mm -hmm. and i think he blew it out of the water with this sequel i think it again it's a master class sequel i think it expands the world while also containing the exact heart and theme of the first one and but continuing it and I mean, that, I mean, that's my overall thoughts, but I do want to start with um, day one, because I that was probably, honestly, maybe my favorite part of the movie. That's the thing that stuck with me the most, this whole mm -hmm. day one prologue that we start out with. And it's full, yeah. this is full spoiler review. So we're talking about everything. Everything's getting talked about right now. So yeah, do you want to start there with maybe uh, some day one pro of the prologue thoughts? I mean, yeah, we can. I, I mean, yeah, I, I, I mean, also, maybe your overall as well. Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's where I guess that would probably be a better place to start because I definitely have some points I want to make in the overall uh, uh, thoughts. Um, so, I was kind of explaining this on my non-spoiler review. I feel like I have a little bit more time and probably a better way to preface it here uh, since we are kind of getting into spoilers and stuff. So, maybe people will understand where I'm coming from and maybe you too, Sammy, might understand where I'm coming from on this. So... I kind of put it this way, I, the the way I view movies, just in general, right? Like, people always ask me, like, oh, why why don't why don't you why do you critique Marvel movies? Why are you hard on them, or or things like that, or, or you know, just like, um, or if I have critiques about a movie, like, what is um, what's your problem? What are you looking for? Things like that, and. I get that a lot. And the thing is, is like the way I view films is like, I almost view them in different levels, like different tiers. And so like right here is like tier one mm -hmm. and tier one to me is like reserved for a certain type of film. And I'm talking about films like Jurassic Park, Empire Strikes Back, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Alien, Aliens, Terminator, Terminator 2, Back to the Future, maybe Forrest Gump, even Goodfellas, uh, you know, movies like that close encounters of the, of the third kind you know so on and so forth but the reason those films get placed in tier one is because they all have something in common and i can't explain that in words what that is but there's that thing that they all have uh -huh. in common okay so 
tier two to me we've had like masterpieces like joker uh birdman you know drive in the past like 20 years and stuff but they're masterpieces like in their own right i feel like and they still don't capture that thing that i consider to be like top tier you know what i mean there's a certain right. thing that movies used to have that we lost along the way i w- was watching an interview with edward norton like a long time ago and he said something that like really stuck with me about movies um because somebody had asked him what do you think it is that keeps people going to the theater um over and over and over again and and just keep you know they keep going to see movies whether it's a disappointing experience or not they just they're motivated to go and edward norton said um he felt like um you know it's because people are on the hunt for something they're on the hunt for that one film that's just gonna do it for them you know it's like they're on the hunt for it assuming that's the case um i found what i was on the hunt for with a quiet place too and to me it broke through the top tier and whatever thing that those films have in the top tier a quiet place too has I don't know what that is again, but I, I can quote a Steven Spielberg interview a long time ago. Um, he was asked, um, why, why does the, why do the filmmakers of your generation choose to make blockbusters and not the art house films? Um, and you know, he's the, the interviewer was talking about George Lucas, Spielberg, you know, Coppola, you know, those types of filmmakers, De Palma and Spielberg answered, why can't we make art house films that are blockbusters too? that's literally what i was thinking i was like hey why not both and <laughs> they're mutually exclusive or what right they're not you know and i think that could be part of the secret to get into what i at least consider the top tier and i understand everybody's top tier is right. going to be different i'm just telling you for me this is the best movie i have seen in the past 20 years and it's the best wow. sequel i have seen since the empire strikes back so you want my thoughts mic drop there you go i'm just saying well, wow, that is the highest praise I think this movie has seen. John Krasinski, I hope you're listening. This is the number one fan. Like that is high, high praise that it broke. It broke into your god tier. It just See, that's how it. I think about it. Like there's like superior, and then there's god tier, mm-hmm. and nothing beats god tier. And that is what every movie is trying to be. Those god tier <laughs> movies, and for you, and for it to break in there, phenomenal. Like. I'll say this really quick and I can like bring this point back up later on, but you know, like Jurassic park, um, the scene with the T-Rex when they're in the car and mm-hmm. like the suspense that you felt when you were watching yeah. that or like jaws, like when Richard Dreyfuss is under the water or many scenes in jaws, this had that, this had that yeah. level of suspense that we don't have anymore. It's not right. just that. It's the rich characters. It's the wonderful performances. It's the asp- it's the charm of the children. Mm-hmm. It's the organic continuation of a story. There's a lot about this that made it what it is. And yeah, I don't I don't give the praise to all the a lot of movies. Sammy, you're right. Not not a lot. At least nothing in the past twenty some odd years has made it into the top tier. But here we are, mm-hmm. and I gotta hand it to it. It's that good. It's it just is so. Wow. Nice. Well, I'm excited to like dive in here and see like the specifics of yeah. like specific moments that you love. Um, I on. also, I will say before, yeah, <laughs> before kidding. we do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I also think I was watching um, an interview. Well, not like an interview, but John Krasinski was doing like a breakdown of a scene for like variety or somewhere. Um, and he was breaking down the, that opening scene of uh, the, like during the prologue. Um, and in it, he talks about how he really made these movies as like a love letter to his children. And that's the basis for it, that at the root of it, that's what it is. And I mean, I, I saw it with my parents today and I was, we were just talking about how like these movies, yes, it is a horror movie and it's a suspenseful and it's kind of, I guess, accessorized in all of these things at the root of it. It's, it's about a family. It's about a family. And the, it just, the circumstance happened to be that they are in an alien apocalypse. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that just happens. And that's because of the writing is so good. That's gr- incredible writing because it's coming from a place of, mm-hmm family and parents and children and what happens when one of them dies and you have to step up or what happens when you grow up and suddenly you have to take care of a parent or what happens when that parent's no longer there and what do you do when someone else is there all of these things are are at the root of it but it's 
And I think that's what you mean. I would, I mean, the same thing with, I would say like E.T. and Spielberg movies, right. like Jurassic Park yeah. and all of these, they're, they're core theme moral films, like things you would see in art house movies. They just so happen to be accessorized and in these situations yeah. that <laughs> we all love, you know what I mean? Yeah. These alien horror movies. Yeah. That just so happens to be the thing. And then that's master genre writing. That's, I think at the core of it, that's, it, it, it master class of genre writing i think it is these two films i mean i'm telling you sammy i was watching this in the theater and like i i, I you probably had this too a little bit maybe if you even if you don't hold it as high as i do like i'm sure you had this feeling midway through the movie like there's no way this is as good as it is you know because mm -hmm movies aren't this good anymore they're just not and and i kept waiting for something to happen that i didn't like you know what i mean i kept waiting for yeah. me to be upset about something or to have an issue about something and it just never happened right i will say the ending it didn't throw me off in a bad way but it did throw me off it did kind of it took me aback a bit <laughs> um but other than that you know the whole time i was just you know i guess on the ride if you will yeah yeah for sure on the journey i get it it's yeah. it's, it's crazy <laughs> mm -hmm. so i do want to i do i love the opening prologue so i do want to start there um, yeah let's get into it kind of going through the movie oh yeah um yeah so i mean i also speaking of jaws he also mentioned in that interview that there's like brody's pizza and the baseball team that the sun mm, is playing mm -hmm. on is like brody's it was yeah, brody's Brody. something baseball right um because of uh brody from jaws right yeah um that was incredible you see I where the influence is immediately so exactly just, yeah yeah and yeah it's when we because like when we talk about the jaws reference because i did hear that comparison before going into the movie and it's really it's the suspense is what people mean because i was i was mm -hmm. thinking about like what exactly do people mean and it's it's the timing of the horror and the timing of the scares mixed in with the emotional beats yeah that's what I mean, at least when I say compare it to Jaws and the inspiration John Krasinski got. I think that's what he was pulling from. I would also and say to too, perfectly. just not to interrupt too much, but like I'll make oh, this quick. But I would I would just also say just even just the camaraderie between a family between the characters, which is mm -hmm. something that Jaws exactly. had as well. It was three the men in characters. Jaws, but you know it's it's the same type of thing we're getting that here. But anyway, I digress. Mm -hmm. um, no, exactly. That's another huge part of it. Yeah, the 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 great characters is like a trademark of all this, so for sure. Um, yeah. So I mean, we start off uh, day one. Uh, we have Lee, I believe is his name, going into the store. We see. I really did like. So he goes in, and it's on the TV that something is happening. I couldn't really make out what it the headline was or anything. It was a bombing but or something. It was a bombing. bombing or, I saw just like a bunch of dust it looked like it was in the desert somewhere or something that's all i really remember which little i mean um, come to find out it probably wasn't a bombing it was probably the, the it was the, the alien aliens, thing yeah, coming down aliens, you know right yeah um also i love that for all by the way i another great thing about genre writing is that you don't have to explain what's going on for the audience to know what's going on there's never one someone's they never sit down and say oh my god can you believe aliens crash landed from this planet and the president did this about it and this and this happened and yet we understand all of that information just sure, by you know tell. like um exactly show don't tell i mean uh, the biggest one obviously is the huge thing coming down from space but even just you know passing the 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 spaceship toy which is of course a reference back to the first film um mm -hmm. but also you know reference the small references like that you pick it subconsciously you pick up on you're like oh so these are aliens these are not of earth this is something else of right. different stuff right. you know and yet you understand that they never say it but you totally understand it yeah um but i what i love about that is like the people who are watching it i believe it's like the grocery store owner and another woman checking out and they're just like, oh, it's probably nothing or like a bombing. I believe the woman says something like, oh, that's so sad. And it it, it kind of hit me because I was like, that's insane that we kind of live in this world where we in the real world, too, we see a bombing on TV and we're like, oh, that's sad. huh? And then kind of move on, like kind of think about it for a moment and then move on. 
And then it's not until it becomes real that it becomes real, even though we're watching it happen in front of our eyes. Mm -hmm. Like that was a very subtle thing that I don't know if that was intentional, but that's how I read that moment. Yeah, but I it really all, enjoyed it, having that. Well, in there. Yeah, it definitely all felt real, and it and it just seemed Made it feel more real. authentic to, uh, yeah, everything that was supposed to be going on. I guess so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that was great. And so then we have him walking back out past his Brody's Pizzeria um to the baseball game where his son is playing um we see his wife playing with their dearly departed now younger son mm -hmm. uh which really just you know hits you in the heartstrings yeah, it's heartbreaking mm -hmm. yeah it's really heartbreaking and so then we have lee coming up to the stands talking to i believe emmett was his name right emmett yeah uh-huh yeah talking uh, to emmett for the first Kill time killian murphy is the actor killian murphy uh -huh. who is also incredible when we talk about the act the acting in this movie is superb like let's take a moment to talk about the actors yes yeah, yeah I, they were they're all at their a game I, everyone you know what noah jupe and millicent um simmons i believe are their names included like to me, she she's the lead of this movie. Millicent Simmons was the lead. Yeah. That girl's the lead of this movie. And everyone else is her supporting cast. Yeah. And they're all at A. I mean, A, a level. I mean, do you have any other? Well, no. I mean, I was just going to say with, with K Killian Murphy, for example, is uh, he was the one thing I was worried about going in because mm -hmm. um, when you add a new character first of all to to a set of characters that we're already so acquainted with it's all, always kind of worrying so i remember hearing his casting um for this like the news of his casting and, and i remember being like oh, killian murphy he just didn't seem like he fit in this world mm -hmm. so i wasn't really sure what they were going to do with him what you know uh dynamic they were going to play and now given i like killian murphy in general i'm just thinking killian murphy associated with quiet place to me wasn't uh something that i i just saw going together very well but boy they went together so well and and the role that they gave him to play was perfect it might be my favorite performance of killian murphy's like i'm not i'm not kidding because yeah. he fell into the character so naturally and so well that it just like yeah he was it was like it was written for him it, it, it's mm -hmm. just it was it was that good so yeah really, really loved good. him yeah yeah and i love that again we're dropping hints about things to come later learning um you know sign language for dive yeah, yeah. Well, uh, may i say one more back. thing about that on the acting point too yeah absolutely. It, it has to do with this opening too john krasinski is an underrated actor too not only is he just a stunning right? filmmaker you i i feel like his performances are going to get kicked under the rug for whatever reason like in the first one for example he didn't talk that much but you then got him in this one where he's still not talking a whole lot but he's like he's got to do these like incredibly intense moments and he just knocks it out of the park i buy him mm -hmm. at every moment and he, he gives very good face you know what i mean like he, he mm -hmm. has the best face expressions he to really where does. it's like you buy everything that he's doing and i think that that should be praised as well i know he's one of the kick under the rug type characters here but like come on for what he does in this film he's great he he sells the beginning to me if it wasn't for John Krasinski, no, really I wouldn't have bought that beginning as well because you could, he he feels like a he seems like a father who's trying to protect his kids, you know, mm -hmm. in, in these moments, and I like that. And again, and it's really important too because he is the entire heart of the movie. You yeah. know what I mean? He's at the center of every decision every single one of the yeah. character the main characters make. Yeah. I mean, uh, Emmett included. Like they, he's at the heart of everything. So if you don't believe that he actually is, you know, that great of a human and just, you know, meant that much to them, then how do you believe any other choices that they make? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know? And he's, it's, the, it's he's... so fundamental that he is played by an incredible mm -hmm. actor that we, we take it for granted, I think. Yeah. He's the heart of the universe, in my opinion, that mm -hmm. character, because the character of Lee, because, yeah. you know, he's ultimately going to be the reason if, if this thing does get stopped he's going to be the reason for it mm -hmm. and that's a big deal like you know the, yeah his character is the heart of everything and if it wasn't for his sacrifices children wouldn't have been able to pass that message along um mm -hmm. which we, we we find out later we'll get into that but yeah yeah um, we'll get we'll get into the the last like solid 10 minutes mm -hmm. of this movie we will get into it believe me <laughs> um but yeah so then we see the of course the big alien crater thing falling from the sky can then chaos basically erupts yeah um everyone starts leaving we have the family splits up for a moment which again i really i i 
for a while I was like, why would you have the family split up? Like that's kind of insane. But it, but the mat, first of all, thematically it makes a lot of sense yeah. because the daughter is for the rest of the movie is trying to fulfill her father's footsteps, trying to fill that. So it makes sense for her to see him react in these situations. But also it makes sense too, like for the plot to understand that like the mom could take care of herself too she knows what to do in the situation she's okay yeah you know what i mean like at the end of the movie we get under you understand that the kids themselves are going to be okay as well at least that's how i understood it like they're going to survive and you learn and at the beginning too that their mother has always had that as well so i really like that they actually split up and i mean this whole the rest of this whole sequence is just phenomenal them going into the store or whatever and the cell phone going off um it was just horrifying because like it it, because imagine if you were in this situation and one cell phone goes off and it's over like that's that's kind of that's horrifying that's i think a level above like terror like that's actually kind of horrifying yeah you know what i mean oh yeah um yeah so yeah that part was incredible um and then so then after this we then cut immediately to where a quiet place part one i guess we now call it really um, well, yeah. left off yeah um i i was kind of shocked about that like it was immediately i thought we might pick up like a week or so later and they were walking in the woods or something so that was also a little bit of a shock that it was in- immediate um but you know they basically have them they get the hell out of there they get their supplies um start walking keep walking and then eventually make their way over to this like what do you call it? Like a, it's like a, a, there's a safe in there. So what do you call the where Emmett is? Like an underground, yeah, un- underground tunnel, bunker, safe, bunker, 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 maybe. Thing. Yeah, it's like a. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they make a, their way there. There's a technical name for it, and I can't think of it right now. But yeah, I know, I know what it is. It's, yeah. it, it is like a safe. It's um, like a yeah, um, safe house thing. Yeah, but the area that they go to i mean it feels so lived in that you just buy that you know uh really that you buy that emmett understands the rules of this underground because it does feel so lived in by him and and um mm-hmm. yeah i like the design of it overall so it was like really the cool. having the cloth on the on the safe you know mm-hmm. that it because you know it gets locked later yeah, yeah. but like things like that yeah Little details yeah it makes me mm-hmm. very lived in there's pictures everywhere yeah. you know by the way i don't think um, we can so yeah, skip have- over the bear trap by the way oh um, my god that bear trap moment was crazy like i i was <laughs> i was I like a reenactment <laughs> of what happened to me when that happened i physically i would oh yep yep like, yep it was bad <laughs> and then the, the kid just I, I wasn't expecting it it came out of nowhere yeah, it came it, out of nowhere at least with the nail in the first one like there was a yeah. little bit of a heads up that's something like that no warning yeah hey, when you break down the brilliance of that it's <sighs> it's like okay we it's the perfect thing yeah. to happen because uh mm-hmm. to, for the audience here because it's like okay you we all know they cannot make a sound and he's going to step into a fucking bear trap. Are you kidding me? How is he supposed yeah. to just survive that? Or like, yeah, there's, there's mm-hmm. no way in heck he's going to be quiet. And when he lets out that yell, it was like the kid just did a good job uh, acting that Incredible. out by the way. Like it was great. And you felt it. And I was like, that's probably some of the most convincing I'm in pain yelling I've ever heard in my life. Mm-hmm. And, and like, yeah, I was sitting there like, Oh Jesus Christ. And like, I like the instant instinct on emily blunt's part you know to uh not only go over there to cover his mouth but you know like just to hug him you know as well like i I just like Mm -hmm. that instinct of her as the mother there um and i'm just like oh man oh man this is like it was just so intense it was a lot going on at once you know what i mean because yeah that's what i think the brilliance of it is you got this baby who's loud you got him then this is like all these things they're they're running from Mm -hmm. a thing they just got like they're like it's the thing that they're running from it and they have to like get in a position to yeah. do the hearing aid thing and they no. can't and like yeah i know it was like it was a lot happening at once yeah. it was one of the most in, it was the one of the more intense parts of the movie for yeah. sure <laughs> it was great it was yeah. great yeah do you have anything else uh, about leading up to this bout before we get to emmett so we're just gonna move right into emmett no i'm good in here i mean i i think that uh it was just a cool way to set him up like through the sniper scope you know what i mean and mm-hmm. i think as an audience member you're like who is that you know we didn't probably right. i didn't guess it was on it anyway um so mm-hmm. yeah 
I know I I did because I remember him from the trailer. So I my, uh, my mom said the same thing that she didn't realize that that was him either for yeah. a minute. Um, and I was like, oh, really? Because for me, when he showed up at the beginning, I was like, oh, it's the guy that's mm. going to help them later. Interesting. They knew him before. All right. Yeah, I'll be honest. <laughs> like, I, that that I, was it for me. I'm proud of myself. I actually only watched that one teaser that came out last year and I haven't seen the nice. trailer since. I, I didn't need one. I was just like sold, mm. you know, from that first teaser last year. I was like, yeah, okay. We're yeah, gonna I don't know how I family, knew that, so. but I did. I like don't remember. Maybe I just remembered. <laughs> that's fine. No, that, that that was that character. Yeah, we can talk and about the later. the Emmett stuff though, if you want to. Yeah, that worked. Yeah, so we get we get to we finally get to safety in uh this safe, which I thought safe. was incredible. Like, <laughs> yeah, safe type again. Which you know, I'm thinking about it. That's the double entendre, I guess, is the word of being in a safe that you're not safe, but you kind of are safe. Mm, yeah, but are you? You're safer. Yeah, but the fact that I didn't get that until right now is like, yeah. well, they're in a safe. Yeah, just clicked for me. Krasinski keeps it just <laughs> it's a gift that keeps on giving. The yeah. more you think about it, literally, the more I thought about it, the better the movie has gotten. Oh yeah, the more I thought yeah. about it, like genuinely. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we get here. We have this whole conversation. Um. We realize that it's Emmett. He realizes um that there is a baby. Um newly born into the world that now needs to be protected and they have this whole conversation about um that the the world has gotten to such a point where the people that are still alive have done things that they are no longer worth saving therefore he's kind of given up and he's just kind of dying living his last yeah. days alone and sad and in, in the safe alone in his safe where he's not really safe but safer yeah. than he would be outside but you know what I mean? Oh, um, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I mean, I the character of Emmett is so interesting because he is he's liter he is the literal op opposition of Lee of John Krasinski's character, where yeah. Lee was the one who died to save his children and wife, versus Emmett is still alive but has lost his wife and his children. Yeah. Um, and needs to kind of learn that and I again I really love the relationship between him and the daughter because the, the whole I love how interesting it is that the whole time she is really trying to fulfill um, her in her father's footsteps versus and so is Emmett in a way but it's the daughter that the is the one that needs to teach him these lessons and he's the one that needs to learn from her and listen from her because she mm -hmm. already has so much more knowledge and more hope and more of lee i guess in her yeah. and under and more of that understanding yeah um so yeah, at that i mean thematically that's just so interesting to to because obviously the big thing going into this movie was that you know, John Chris's character is dead. What's going to happen now? What else happens? Yeah. Um, so to put them in with his literal opposition, like we'll put the opposite of what you just had is a really smart choice thematically, structurally, yeah. plot-wise, everything. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about just his entire character right now. Like I absolutely loved it. What, do you have anything else on an you know, Analyze Emmett real quick? Um not analyzing Emmett so much, but analyzing the dynamic with uh, him mm -hmm. and the daughter more so, I suppose. Um, which is, the, I guess, the point I was trying to make earlier, too, um, as to why this also works uh, so well as a sequel, is, uh, like, he really is going the Empire Strikes Back route, um, where he wants to separate the characters on their separate journeys um and they just every time you know once i saw that that was being done i was like okay i see exactly where krasinski's kind of going a yeah. little bit you know it's like he really is taking inspiration right, right. from you know empire a little bit in uh -huh. that sense because he's like yeah the second movie obviously needs to separate their journeys separate their paths and but um, also the and it's also not only the separation of the stories but how they connect and like the interlacing of different right right scenes right. i mean c accumulating in the climax at the end yeah. but it's like not only are they separated but in their separation you learn more about each individual character and their relationship right, together. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right, yeah. It's the interlacing of their scenes together that yeah. you notice the separation or it yeah. makes it more worthwhile. Yeah. 
you know yeah because one thing just to separate your characters but like for it to mean that's the meaning of it for it to mean something right i guess that's that my point is, is like I, I figured that 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 was what he was going to use that for is to mm -hmm. uh you know uh develop our characters in different environments i suppose and i, I mm -hmm. which i which i think is the way to go and it's another reason why this works it's a reason why empire worked back in the day you know and mm -hmm. I, I think that krasinski he, he's smart like he's smart yeah. he gets it you know what i mean he just gets it he does and and uh yeah i <laughs> that's all i'll say about that i you, you can uh proceed yeah, absolutely uh so let me think so after this is when um the daughter what is her character's name i want to call her millie i think is the actress's name is what they call her millicent uh simmons is what i'm calling her in my head uh, i keep saying millie in my head as much as i love this um, movie i'm the wrong person to ask <laughs> I know. reagan maybe i yeah. want to say i know the mom I, I know right? emily blunt is evelyn i know that yes uh, um, and marcus might be the boy i don't know sure. like i could find out but right. too. Fair. Uh, i'm just gonna call her the daughter but then we They're have both great actresses these kids both great actors, actors. Both i know their names em kids, emily yeah. blunt millicent simmons yeah. noah jupe i know all of your real names i okay. swear all right well that's good all right <laughs> yeah at least we got that uh exactly i got the important stuff yep. um but so this is when we hear because right we hear beyond the sea play and on right. the radio right and they begin to talk about how way dad would have heard that what the heck what is this and then Emmett reveals that it, it is only in like a very this very close region mm -hmm because they're nearby where the sea is or where this island might be. They're about a day away from it. Um, so they've recently been able to get that signal. Yeah. Um, and so then she's the one that figures out it's actually a clue because there is an island very about a day, about a day's walk um, very close by. Yeah. So then she just decides, she packs up, she grabs the shotgun, she grabs uh, the hearing aid and the speaker and she pieces out. Yeah. um and her the brother tries to go with her she says no she leaves him there which again i really liked because at first i was like you know they're splitting them up all right but it's it, it works so perfectly it was necessary it 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 was again for the ending to work and be as great as it was it was necessary that they be yeah. split up in this moment and they go on separate separate but equal journeys if you will yeah they all run um, parallel yeah, yeah um because and then after this so they realize this she goes out um we should point out the detail too that's brilliant here though real quick just Go before ahead. she leaves um the the headphone move where she gives them the headphones which right. is yeah you need that there for the ending mm -hmm. to work which is it's it, it's great but we'll yeah. get into that but i i do remember that yeah no that was a great moment um, so then after she leaves everybody the family finds out um evelyn the mother finds out as well and she goes to Emmett and says that like you need to you need to go find you need to go find her you need to find her and bring her back to me. And she says I like this was might have been my favorite line in the whole movie. She says that if Lee were here, he'd look you in the eye and tell you that his little girl yeah. is out there and she's one of the <laughs> yeah. people we're good saving. Stuff. Good like, stuff. is that yeah. not the movie right there? Yeah, that is like that's the movie done. Like credits roll. That's the movie. Yeah, that's it that's the message i mean absolutely incredible and that of course because it is so incredible that it encourages him to go yeah but i think um, it was also important though sammy for emmett to also express his feeling of the people out there ain't worth saving because of what we end up we seeing see later that it's on a right? little true he's kind of right he's it, not entirely degree, wrong right yeah mm -hmm. but yeah obviously yeah, yeah, like the message is clear that you know this little girl here is worth saving and mm -hmm. it's it's more powerful just knowing that she's probably going to ultimately be the hero of this entire thing you know and uh, so. that's that that just makes it more powerful you know i think mm -hmm. so yeah i do i will say this whole time this whole movie i kept feeling like the mother might die and i feel like that's of course because i was groomed by the first one because you know a worst case scenario I had that feeling happened too. in that one I had that feeling but too. i also think it might happen though in the third one because i keep Maybe. thinking if this really is like a true love love letter from john krasinski to his children then i think the perfect ending would be like yes the parents are gone and yet they are now like the leaders and they've freed the world or something or they're at least at a very solid good position of 
like contentment and yeah. like they're gonna be okayness. Like that is mm. that's that's what every child wants. You know mm. what I mean? That's the yeah. end goal to live from your to parents to leave their yeah. children with. You know. Yeah. So I think she might she might die in the third Maybe. one. So yeah, that would be my my estimate currently. Yeah, and also uh, can I state then, here too, yes. like how top mm-hmm. tier Emily Blunt is as an actress in this movie? Like <sighs> right? the first one too, but like it's just she had some she had such powerful moments here and 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 just Mm -hmm. the way that she i don't know i don't know how to explain her um version of acting because it's like it's it's there's something that it's like magic happens when you get her in situations it's like it's um, the only way i've ever really been able to describe it is like it's in the eyes i think like yeah. there's some actors where you have you always have to watch their eyes. That's where you know yeah. that's like if they're in the moment and they're feeling it and it's true for them, I like that. their eyes yeah. will reflect it. I like that's that. how I think about it. It's always in the eyes. I like that. Yeah. Because then like watch that. like test it. Watch like a really bad movie that you think has awful performances true. and what look at their eyes. They're probably dead. Yeah. Or they're not in it at all. Yeah. She just I don't know. She she just something about when she steps on the screen. It's 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 like it, it, it's it's enhanced about 10 times like you know mm-hmm. what i mean when when she's in this movie and and i, I don't know i, I just i yeah. love her i love her and i love her in this movie too. yeah i know yeah absolutely and what's like what sucks is like these uh, performances are so good and yet like they're probably going to be overlooked by award season i don't mean it sucks but like it happened last time we'll see though this movie's making a lot of ruckus you know what i mean it is true. It, it, it's making a lot of ruckus and it's bringing and- in the the people back to the movies so that doesn't say nothing to hollywood you know that doesn't mean something i also saw it this movie made 80 million dollars worldwide in its first weekend on a 61 on a 61 million dollar budget that's a good thing because you could see that's incredible you could see that they put more money in to this one um and it's paying off they used it right don't get me wrong it's not like it was just used for no reason like there was more creatures in this one i feel like and they looked a lot more polished if you ask me because yes. i had just rewatched see them the more first close one. up they, they looked yeah. a little more polished here which i liked mm-hmm. um but yeah no i think he i think the money just went into mostly expanding the world i mean mm-hmm. um the set in the first movie was the house you know what i mean and he had the exactly there's a lot the, more yeah, they, they could move a lot locations actors you know i mean you needed more here so that's that's there's a whole train like you know there's a whole island set that they needed yeah that was different yeah yeah no silly um so i think so after this then we have um emmett meeting up back with because they she does find the train the train um yeah and i i don't i don't exactly remember it the in between of there's a blank i remember the train sequence happening well, and then um her like crying because thinking that he left with like well before that we got to remember aid. what happens I don't when, remember in between well we got to remember that she's uh kind of investigating on this train she was trying to find that first mm-hmm. aid kit and then she grabs it yes. and then that background shot mm-hmm. of the monster just coming for her and like it's almost and like it's you silence. won't you won't catch it at first you gotta uh-huh. like wait a second and then eventually like yeah. is it my theater uh the whole audience when, when they noticed that they were like <gasps> <laughs> you know, like, that, yeah. that was one of the moments where it was dead silent in the interview i watched with john krasinski he talked about this as well but i forget what he called it but it's the the perspective when they go into just the daughter's hearing when you only hear what she hears he there was a name for it i forget but it was in one of those moments where it was just dead silent right we're like, and it, then this creature in the background it sucks the air out of the room and i want to explain too like i think what's so brilliant about that is when you get these moments you're actually hearing something like people don't realize this that you hear a certain frequency right. you are, there is sound there you just don't know it. It, it it's sound that makes it sound more quiet is what it is it's a certain they, yeah, frequency they talked about that as well because the the actress um described her or her mother described like her deafness that she can hear like yeah. big sounds she can hear laughter she can hear like screaming she mm-hmm. can hear if there's an explosion she'd probably be able to hear it but yeah. like muffled and very quietly and so they adapted that and they mm-hmm. put it in the movie yeah yeah Mm -hmm. it's just uh yeah so it's not nothingness right it's just it's just a low frequency so it sounds Mm -hmm. like nothing and if it goes low enough you'll go poop so right (laughs) exactly (laughs) don't want that in a movie theater please not in please they just opened keep them nice 
the love of god people um do you remember anything else what happens in between then so we have this whole train sequence well yeah because um, Emmett shows then, up right there he takes the monster yes. out or essentially he helps her out from mm-hmm. that and then they um no not really i mean uh you know i mean the the great character moment between her and Emmett when mm-hmm. you know he was um well, she said something along the lines of uh oh his wife remember she brings that up which i thought yes. was a really great moment and i thought he acted killian murphy did very mm-hmm. well there by the way where he was uh, you don't talk about my wife and you mm-hmm. know this i don't know how this girl little girl right. acts as well as she does she is just so good and that moment was amazing yeah. to me and that's the moment where he decided to team up with her essentially but then it goes i think from there we proceed into the hearing aid moment the big one um that we are very much like it's intense because she's looking everywhere for the hearing aid you know Mm -hmm. and and, uh yeah uh, yeah i also that also reminded me there i believe it's maybe in this section as well when she um is talking to Emmett and says something like you you said you couldn't help us because there you couldn't do enough but now but now right you can. now you can that's right yes yeah. powerful powerful that was around writing. this part powerful as well because like, i loved that yeah. that was a great moment as well yeah because again it was very that was very lee of her that was very yeah. of her father to yeah. say that it's true it was wonderful it's true yeah um and then i don't remember it's something i feel like some other things happen in between but then i remember she wakes up um on the the next day um, because they find this like house or shack or something to stay in, and the uh, what the shotgun and the uh, speaker and hearing aids are gone. So she mm-hmm. starts like freaking out, and then like collapse and cries, and then oh, in so walks good. Emmett with so with all of it, being like, "I found a boat, let's go." Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was so good. I, I love that. I mean, that was great. Another another one. Of the, ugh, another one of those moments where I'm hanging on to the edge of my seat just because I'm like, "Oh my god!" Or he really left without you know and uh you don't you don't really expect him to just because you're not sure and... exactly i wasn't 100 percent sure i was like yeah. it could check out either way i don't know what he did exactly yeah. you're in her same position yeah this whole film is a series of it can go either way <laughs> but that's like part of the brilliance i of thought it the too. mother and and or the baby were dead multiple times mm. multiple times in this movie i'm gonna point something now too by the way i'm, I'm kind of glad they didn't go this route but when she first showed Emmett the baby and then he started to come around mm. earlier on mm-hmm. um I, I was like oh my god did they have an affair is that his baby <laughs> don't tell me that's oh, his baby there's no way. yeah it, it would have been an interesting choice though i mean that's all interesting while we're also while we're talking about the baby i also think the third movie probably ends with like just the kids and they're like holding the baby and they're like does the baby have a name and they're like oh i don't know we never got around to it and then they name it lee (laughs) oh they just get up on a big rock and hold it up exactly (laughs) they present him to the new to the new alien free world uh alien just 100 p- pops up and because that baby does not have a name no. i noticed that as well they never name it and i'm like it's because they're waiting to name it lee at the no. very end of the last movie yeah as probably. a symbol yeah that'd be cool that'd be a really awesome way to end actually mm-hmm. i would like that a lot because again because it would just all tie it back to him yeah like yeah. just have like that one a new a new person to grow up in the new free world but also have it be lee you know what i mean so have there be, be another yeah. another lee but in the in the good world i really now, like that actually world. i'm with you i'm with you i um, like that choice please i feel like that's where they're going like i don't even want to say like you can have that idea for free yeah. because i feel like that's where they're going <laughs> So I feel like it's probably already written because there's got to be a third one, right? Is this confirmed or no? It's not confirmed. Well, Emily Blunt said that he has a lot of good ideas. She was asked about it. And okay, she said good. Krasinski has a lot of great ideas for a third movie. And um, the would he um, still write and direct it? Because that's the key. He, he has to write and direct all of them. I hope so. Um, I I, I, w- I can't imagine him like declining that offer. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, even Plus, it- I think three is good. I think this could be a really solid trilogy. I don't see there being any more. So for him to do two thirds, oh, yeah. Well, it'll be one. you know twenty years down the line they'll start doing spinoffs and stuff. But yeah, three right. is like what you want to do here, and yeah. I think that um you know I yeah he needs to write and direct it, and I think that um the way you um 
I don't know. Like, I, I kind of had an idea for the ending, but I don't know. I don't like getting caught up in fan theories, so so we're gonna yeah. move, we're gonna move on. Moving um, on. Um, so this then is when I they go to the boat, um, and uh, they're they're trying to get a boat, and then they get confronted by some of the nice, the not nice people that uh, Emmett's been talking about. And then also while <laughs> intercut nice with this, the, the not nice people. They're like pirates, the essentially. That's kind of the vibe I got. Right. I, them, yeah. that, that, I thought that was cool. I though. agree. I like that pirate I kind of got that vibe, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that, too. Um, that kind of like, you know, pillage and plunder kind of vibe kind of thing as well. Yeah. Um, they had going on. I also, while intermixed with this, we have uh, the mother going out to get uh, supplies and medicine for for the boys meanwhile they stay back um and kind of hang out for a while <laughs> like, you know they kind of chill um while everybody else is out in peril um but you know she's walking around this like it's pharmacy and like i don't remember what it was, it was like it's a small kind of area um to get medicine while well intercut with that but then going back to the daughter and emmett they then get confronted by these pirates. Uh, hell breaks loose, and then eventually uh, they are that. able to. Yeah, that was a lot. That really was a lot. And then, of course, when they get, uh, I forget, someone he screams, right? I believe. What do you mean? Right. Dive. They dive. dive. So, or how does the right they dive? Because then, how do the aliens get there? How do the creatures get there? Oh, I mean, you know, oh, well, they're making noise. Yeah, something. right. Well, the, I think the little girl makes noise the second that she ties the rope against uh, Emmett. Or maybe he's the one making noise. Maybe. I can't remember. One of those two. Someone made noise. makes noise. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, yeah it I was just I, it was clearly like a situation of yeah, you're gonna make noise because like it's mm-hmm. this whole rowdy dow going on and um, yeah. but the um, what I was gonna say, yeah, the dive we got to remember. Exactly. Like, yes. Unbelievable. Like I, I I did not think it was gonna come back around there. You know because when mm-hmm. Emmett asked him earlier in the film, you know how do you say dive and. Krasinski right. told him and, and, and here we uh, are. I, I had a feeling that would come back around I didn't think so not like yeah. this anyway if it was going to I didn't think it would mm-hmm. come back around like this I, I I just thought it was uh, I thought movies like this though I feel like sometimes I overwatch movies like this sometimes like mm-hmm. I'm looking at every single thing I'm trying to remember yeah. every single line and noticing where every trying to look yeah. at everything yeah. trying to take it in so when I heard that, I was like, "Okay, remember well, that. That might come. That sounds like something yeah. that could maybe come back." Well, you should be because you host the show. I don't. So <laughs> I know it's just a necessity. <laughs> but either way, I, I do I, it. It do it naturally. I would br- do it on my own. Played brilliantly. I mean, um, the the way that Emmett uh, uh, played that though was, you know, the, and I was like, "Yes, mm-hmm. that was it was it was amazing. It was amazing." Um, yeah, my totally mind agree. was blown, and uh, and she did. She dove. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, that she was. Dove. That was cool. That was cool. I agree. I also I was like feeling real uncomfortable. They like made her like take off her jacket and shit, and she was just like in her tank top. And I was like, if pirates, I don't like that you made a little girl mm. only be in her tank top. But mm. it was for like one split second, and then she dove, and it was fine. Yeah. But it's just a taste of like I don't like to be like a little extra. Like in case you weren't sure these were bad people, like let's throw in a little hint of extra not niceness Mm -hmm. just in case i want to know how they did Um, that uh on a practical level too because um isn't there a thing to like where where deaf people can't be in the water for a certain amount of time or or something like that so i'm just curious maybe there had to be some kind of protection for your ears i would imagine i don't want to say she was in the water for that long well when you're doing take after take after take well, right, you know right, I mean? but I don't think she just dives. Is there much? I don't remember there being much more. She of goes her under in the water. for a minute. It was much more of like Emmett yeah. in the water. Yeah, for, for sure. a while. She goes under for a minute though, and I, I just feel like take after right. take because they she's the one a... that eventually gets on uh, the boat yeah. and helps them out. Because a lot of that stuff yeah. is done in like one take. A lot of that action sequence, mm-hmm. so I feel like they had to have done quite a few takes to get it exactly right. right. But maybe it was like like that well rehearsed, so they're like you know mm-hmm. ready to go too. Who knows? Because it just it, the, that thing that shot where. Where they're panning um across the entire dock though and this like all this action's going on it was just very well choreographed and i love that um and that was something else i wanted to say speaking of shots anytime they show a vehicle in this movie 
and the car shots are it's amazing that view from the back seat where yeah. but it's like it's also very still you know it doesn't feel mm-hmm. like the camera's moving like you're just kind of with right. the vehicle from the back seat that stuff's great mm-hmm. and the way that it's like a perspective kind of right and the way shot. that the environment kind of plays out around the vehicle it's like i'm not mm-hmm. sure again how they pull some of this stuff off but it's it's really good it's it's brilliant yeah no, I totally agree. Like, I I mean, back to the beginning, like the scene of when Emily Blunt is just driving backwards right. away from that bus that cool. and it's filmed like you're from the back seat, yeah. but kind of, you know? Yeah. Uh, like, it's absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, there were totally so many. Agree. I don't want to dwell on the beginning again, but like, there were just so many great kill scenes in that beginning. It was like, oh my gosh, it was yeah. intense. It was intense. Yeah. That was, uh, real quick, do you ever watch, um, what is it called? The Dead Meat, the Dead Meat podcast? They're on no. YouTube. No. the kill count um mm-hmm. they do a show called the kill count where they just go through they review horror movies but they like count all the kills <laughs> and they like go through it that way and i'm like my god have fun doing this one <laughs> right dead meat i am so sorry because that's the first there's a lot of kills but also yeah. like there's so many like i feel like background <laughs> ones like you're gonna have to pause and like yeah it's gonna be a harder one yeah every time there's you say dead meat I- i'm sure you've seen this film uh bridge to terabithia I have, yeah, not in a long time. Where when did they say dead meat? I don't remember. It's 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 a uh, it's in the uh, beginning. They're about to do that race in the in the recess scene, and this kid just, oh, this kid just walks okay. up to uh, Josh Hutcherson's character, and he's just like dead meat. <laughs> nice. Like, I, I know what scene you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um. Anyway, there was uh one other thing I wanted to add about the the doc, and it's oh yes, yes. The uh, I think part of what adds to the uh the excitement or suspense and everything else too, and this is something else that Jurassic Park had with the T Rex. Again, the sound mm-hmm. of the monsters is amazing. It, they sound freaky like you you don't want to yeah. fuck with these monsters these aliens i guess at this point i mean mm-hmm. um, whatever you want to call them i mean yeah great. like i mean while we're here like let's take a brief intermission to talk about the sound <laughs> yes because it is it is unreal yeah. that the sound is able to complement the story and the story takes advantage of the fact that it can use sound in this really cool way is I mean, there's nothing more to say about it other than it's it's absolutely yeah. perfection. It melds, it molds. It's the per, it's a, the most perfect way to use a storytelling tool. Mm-hmm. That's it, because that's at the end of the day, like great sound is just a tool for storytelling. Yeah, and for it to complement each other and have it both be masterful and make right. complete sense, and it, the sound is re- incredible. It like. Is. Ev- yeah and there are multiple every single beat literally is f- like phenomenal i mean i'm trying to think of something more creative to say about it but like it's just it, it, it we must take pause yeah. and respect and show respect did you uh see this in imax team. out of curiosity i didn't no it was an offering uh it i recommend an imax watch me. if you could find it out there folks mm-hmm. i got to it see was it still i mean I, I saw it in just 2d regular and i'm, I'm sure it's fine this, so yeah i'm sure, I'm sure it's IMAX fine is... uh either way this yeah. is something you should see in the theater like either way i don't care what theater 100%. you're going to go go watch it in the theater these krasinski said it himself he makes these for the theater like they're he gave an that. announcement before he didn't show up him and emily blunt did not show up in my movie theater disappointingly but they're was like a little was there a thing for you there was like a little you got clip an intro of him. we didn't get an yeah intro. there was an intro where he was like hey welcome welcome what? to back to theaters i'm di- writer director john Grzynski. thank you i've made this movie to be on the big screen yeah. thanks for watching it maybe he was there maybe they were taping that live like <laughs> they were just broadcasting it. <laughs> yeah like, I didn't get directly that. <laughs> from the back room <laughs> maybe it was there we go maybe it was because i not. i, I don't know it was it intro. was a regal so if you go to regal cinemas maybe you'll get a You'll get an intro. I love that intro. I love those intros. I, I got an I intro for uh Last Jedi from Ryan Johnson and apparently everybody oh, else nice. everybody else tells There's me been a couple. Everybody else tells me yeah. they don't they didn't get that, so I feel special for that one, I guess. Nice. But, yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, anyway. Um also Selma Hayek introduced the trailer for the Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Oh god, that trailer. <laughs> that was that was a moment yeah um anyway got anything else about sound before moving on? No, but I will say I did get a Hitman's bodyguard hitman's wife bodyguard trailer and uh yeah she did not introduce that either it was just the trailer yeah. and i was like damn it <laughs> yeah 
yeah. Anyway, go on. But proceed. <laughs> saw the last saw the last night in Soho trailer though, and oh, the sick. Top Gun Maverick trailer. I got Top Gun Maverick in the IMAX again, and I was so yeah, happy about that. that. Was really cool. uh, the those one are my thing, two favorite trailers. That yeah, this is on to do with the movie, obviously. Just quick sidetrack. I, I got to say, it was so great because we got the new Black Widow trailer in ours, and it was oh, just nice. so great to like sit down in a theater and get like a new Marvel, Marvel. trailer, and right. then we got a new Fast Nine trailer there as well when we were uh-huh. sitting there, and it was like it was just so cool to like to cool. see new trailers it felt like i was mm-hmm. back at the movies so this is cool yeah yeah we did have uh it was the the top gun maverick trailer was like just the regular one i think there's only the one trailer um but like i had seen it before but it like it's got two, laughs think, in yeah. our theater when maverick was like when they were like it's a pleasure to see you here and he oh, was yeah. like um i was i was ordered to be here like yeah. it got a laugh in our theater like everybody laughed yeah. it was great that trailer constantly gives me chills every time i see mm-hmm. it yeah. yeah it's a no, great it trailer great. it's a great trailer i yeah i know i'm so excited yeah. i was sitting next to my dad and we both looked at each other and we were like so we're seeing that <laughs> oh, we yeah. yeah for sure yeah i can't wait um uh, i know i'm so excited anyway yeah. uh so moving on we then we get them to the island they do get to the actual island where we find uh, that there's a lot of normal life happening what's the actor's name on D- here. D- demon houston or something oh man it's i really good. Yeah. saw it I, I looked up his name name but i do not remember he does not have a character actually. name I, just, I looked it up on indb and uh he's man on <laughs> he's the, the island. guy from the guardians of the galaxy that's what i when i when he came right. on screen i was like oh that guy right yeah I wasn't like, oh, that's an actor playing a role. I was like, oh no, that's the guy yeah. from Guardians of the Galaxy in this movie now. Right. Um, but we find them, and uh, they find shelter there and everything. Um, and we have uh, Emmett talking to him about um, kind of like how they got here and everything. And we find out that the the U.S. government found out that the aliens could not swim, so they ordered a bunch of uh, they ordered the entire Coast Guard to get people on military ships to get them the hell out of there. Um, and they tried to do that, and what I say, I think two two of like the twelve ships that they had ordered actually got out um, because people you know, started screaming and people freaked out and were pushed and were crazy about it and obviously mm. made sound. Um, which that also was a really interesting choice because again it just made it so real like a hundred percent if that was the situation where you need to be as quiet as possible and there was only like 12 ships available and maybe not everyone would get on like people would not be quiet no. and then you would all then everyone just dies right which i thought was a really interesting thing to include yeah. but really really enjoyed and so i won't lie I, the people um, who've been living here oh go ahead i was just, i won't lie i kind of went potty on this part so i missed a little <laughs> oh, bit. Nice. i missed a little bit of the you're dialogue learning you're stuff. finding this out now i, I missed a little so bit so there the was a, a thing yeah. the coast guard yeah <laughs> Um, so we found out then, so then there, all the people living there are some of the, uh, remnants of the people who okay. were, able, who were able to get out on ships. Yeah. Um, and they've been living here peacefully ever since. Um, and then, so there's another gap in my knowledge. So it's between here and when the, the creature attacks. So I know then also on the mother and son side, um, he gets trapped inside of the safe um, where there's they're losing oxygen by the moment he's with the baby and there's only mm-hmm. the one oxygen tank the baby also needs oxygen yeah um and they're trapped in there they he locks himself because again that cloth we were talking about earlier he like doesn't leave it on top of the lock so they get locked in um and they're losing oxygen which that also really stressed me out like i can't imagine like if i was in this yeah. situation i would be like heavy heavy deep breathing the entire time oh yeah i remember so the like i remember if the oxygen, oxygen ran out i remember the oxygen, i would be yeah. dead oxygen yeah. i was present for yeah. so if oxygen started to go down yeah. i'm like because i i this is also when i thought the baby might die just like on accident you know what i mean like maybe he forgot to like put it back on the baby or something or the baby's lungs malfunction or something happened like i yeah, thought it, something might no, have it was stressful here, but... it was stressful you're not wrong like stressful. this is one of the more stressful scenes in the film yeah <laughs> sure. mm-hmm. yeah um so we have this going on and then mother trying to hurry back to him um and the baby and then meanwhile um Emmett is looking at the boat that they came in on and surprise there's a creature right yeah on yeah. it mm-hmm. um so then he runs away tries to warn the town 
and again it's like it's like again it's similar to the prologue it's just wreaking havoc kills everywhere people dying all over the place go ahead Dom. it was just a quick interjection again because i was kind of confused yeah. about, uh, about this too because uh remember the earlier on the creature drowned um Mm -hmm. in, when Emmett was underwater in the in the net and everything, um, mm -hmm. so I was like kind of wondering how did the creature latch on to the boat? I know. And like, so I figured this out. And survive. I, I actually looked up a. There's an actual like explanation for this. Um, oh, nice. That's out there online. So if you go out there, uh, it's not their boat that he was looking at. The creature hopped on a different boat and uh, went to the okay. island on that. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was a different boat. Oh, okay. Yeah. He didn't latch that onto it. Yeah, it was a whole different creature, different boat that just. Oh, okay, yeah. I was so, thinking that mm -hmm. that was the because you see Me him too, look at, at first, a boat, yeah. and I was just assuming that was <laughs> just the boat. Me too at first, yeah. but it seemed like such a plot hole to me that I had Got to get it. it figured out. And apparently, it's a different boat. That no, I was that, wondering. Yeah. I kind of was just. I love the movie so much that I was kind of willing to forgive that. I didn't sure. Think about yeah. It too much, it's but like if that's, that's the true. one thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I, I did notice that I was like, but didn't you say they could drown and like it popped in my head? But then I immediately immediately ignored it yeah, I was luckily, like, it yeah matter, it's covered cares? luckily it was not their same but it's a, nice. it does make sense that makes yeah sense. <laughs> he hopped on a different that checks one. out yeah. and i'm sure if i go back and watch it like i'll notice that it's yeah. not the same i did like how the yeah. boat was kind of um, like um um what, what what would you call that like like rickety a little bit yeah yeah i, I just thought it was like a cool little yeah like beating up a little bit yeah d detail mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah you know it was, yeah, it was a really good detail i agree yeah. Um, so yeah, we have this and then again, wreaking havoc. Uh, we have the, I want to call him like the mayor. I don't know if he's the mayor, but the guy from the guardians of the galaxy that they were talking to, um, immediately picks up, I believe this is his son. Um, and then Emin is also running and finds another little boy just standing there and picks him up yeah. as well and takes those two little boys immediately into the house hides them in a closet and then they're never seen again they're probably i dead. also was i i don't know i don't think so because if there's a oh, part really? three i could see them going back for them be i could because the daughter was there and Emmett obviously they were there Possibly. they remembered and i feel like we end the movie at a yeah. place where they're not just going to leave people behind yeah. like they're going to remember that there's children there it's interesting just because they pretty much obliterated plus that i island. think with yeah with what I think the ending of the third film might be with, you know, the children kind of stepping up in their parents' place, it would make sense for there to be more, you know, children of lost parents that they meet along the way. Because again, the father does die, the the mayor yeah. in my head, he does, he does die. That I wasn't, I didn't think he was going to die. I thought maybe he would. Yeah stick around but um, i hope you get snatched up as well i want to say this too because we were kind of talking about this off camera a little bit um i i meant to mention this um but we were kind of talking you were talking about the fact that you you did not see a cliffhanger coming mm -hmm. um for me it was actually when they were on their way to the island that i figured out that there was going to be a cliffhanger because i was just thinking about mm -hmm. like where we were in the movie right and right. i'm trying to think about like if we're going to go from a simple three act structure, um, just so just based on that, I was like, this isn't going to get wrapped up, you know, because right. if you're going to wrap up a quiet place, yeah. you're going to end this creature outbreak, this monster mm -hmm. outbreak, this alien invasion. And there's and we're not no getting way there in like the they were going to be able to left. do that, right? Yeah. So that's the moment I realized. I didn't necessarily say, think cliffhanger, but I was like, "There's going to be a third movie. There has to be at this point." Because, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I was yeah. thinking there was no way it was going to get wrapped. I guess at that point. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I mean, like, I won't say anything more because we we will get to it um, sequentially. But li when sure. the movie ended, I was genuinely shocked. I was like. Mm -hmm. I mean, I felt this way about the first one too, where the first one ended, and I said to myself, I "Was like that wasn't the end of the movie. Right. That's not the end of that movie. I know three X structures, and I know endings and conclusions, and that was not it. There's more. That was right. not the ending. Right. And the same thing happened where I thought there was at least a good twenty minutes left. This all this movie also flew by for me. It was snappy. It was just like oh, yeah, big thing movie. after big thing after big thing after big thing, uh, and then it ended. Well, that's another thing when I when I was kind kind of trying to compare it to i guess top tier movies and why it broke mm. into that once it starts it just goes and like yeah. top tier movies had that feeling and uh, we don't have that anymore usually 
I mean, mm -hmm. his movies are definitely fast paced, but there's something about this one that just, I, I don't right. know. It just, it felt like, yeah, like that. You did not want it to end. You know what I mean? You just wanted mm -hmm. it to keep going. It's because it, it holds your level of intensity the whole time. And that's also why I think it is why it, John Krasinski is so smart because with the premise of it being a quiet place, that's such a smart way to be able to hold attention. Just keep it quiet because we as humans in the modern world are so uncomfortable and so not used to that, that if you just kind of keep yeah. it at this quiet thing and pick your really important moments for sound to be made, just like the family has to pick the really right, important moments for right. sound to be made, then it, it impacts the audience more and it keeps oh, yeah. that level of tension throughout because you're constantly just quiet 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 big moment sure. and then quiet quiet forever and then a big loud moment and then quiet yeah. it, it's it's brilliant it really yeah. is like it, it's brilliant writing yeah 100 percent um but yeah i was totally shocked by that ending but uh before that we have so then they all run uh they all well, they all get into the truck and they head for they to distract the creature and it's running after them that's why i don't think the children are dead because they the creature follows them there's mm -hmm. allegedly only the one i'm thinking that was there so once it followed them the kids were then yeah. safe apparently or hopefully allegedly yeah. they would be um but then so it follows them in the truck and they head for the radio station um mm -hmm. to i which i didn't pick up on first i didn't really realize where they were headed until we get there and then i was like holy shit they're at the radio station. Right, right and then it, this is again all of this is then intercut with the mother trying to get back into the safe to get the the boys and then once she's in there then there's another attack and the creature starts attacking the safe and they're no longer safe in there uh, yeah, yeah and again they don't have the shotgun they don't have the frequency thing so it's yeah it's all it's again like I, I will say the parts of the first one do seem a little so there are some things that are convenient that if you were to be really nitpicky you could say that this is only happening because it's a story and it needs to happen and I understand that similar with this that you know what I mean where the only possible thing that could save them is if at that moment the daughter turned on the frequency and she just so happens to do so it's very convenient but again I, I don't care i don't care about it. i see the criticism but i doesn't bother me well the only pushback i would give on that too though i i get what you're saying i get the point mm -hmm. you're making but it I, I feel like the reason that this works and it doesn't feel like such a plot convenience is because just because what happens happens um and yes they're saved mm -hmm. for now they're not saved overall. This world has mm -hmm. stakes and it right. still has the big threat is still lurking. Um, mm -hmm. They got saved for the moment, but it's it's not going to last mm -hmm. forever. And I think that that's why yeah. it works and doesn't feel like such a convenience mm -hmm. and such a easy out. You know what I mean? It, it feels 100%. like, like I said, and again, um, well, we'll get into this here too, but like, uh, you know, just jumping ahead just a tad. Um, if they hadn't set up the headphones in the beginning that she gave them the headphones, then everything wouldn't have lined up and, and it, it made sense 100%. when it happened. So yeah. Anyway, sorry, go. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Also, I just was reminded of the, there's also a conversation that um, I forgot about just going back a little bit that Emmett has, um, I believe with the mother uh, where he says that, yeah, it is the mother, where he's talking about how his wife like was all right for a really long time and then she got sick and uh -huh. it was really the pain that killed her. Like she just had to, like she just, when right. then one day she just screamed. Yeah, that's Like it right. was so bad that that's one right. day she screamed and then that's how she, that's how she went apparently. Right. Um, right. And that, and for that, because then that seed is then planted for then, because then the mother then says like, I need to go to get you medicine because you're going to be in pain and I, I can't lose you yeah. because that's both like, I don't want you to die from your injury, but also I don't want you to be in so much pain that you have to scream that you then get yourself unnecessarily killed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, um, and again, I love that because that that's a really interesting mm -hmm. thing of like, what if you get you're so sick that you you sc you have to scream and you die and that that's that. What do you do with that pain when you can't release it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's such an interesting thing, because again, it, it happens throughout people get hurt it happens with the bear job people get hurt and they can't release it. Yeah. It's a you know, it's a continuous, literal and physical thing that yeah. gets dropped at. 
Um, the other that's thing I, w- I was going to say, too, uh, that's important going uh, earlier into the movie, mm-hmm. uh, again, is a different conversation that they had, um, but him and uh, Emily Blunt's character, is mm-hmm. it helps just give the whole movie context is the conversation about Emmett asking how does it work with the uh ear Mm -hmm. you know thing because if he didn't know that then he he wouldn't have known they wouldn't have been on the same page this whole journey you know with with the uh the frequency so i thought that was important too for them to set up Mm -hmm. yeah they 100 percent um so then yes we get then into kind of the final which i i as i was watching it i did not think that i would be talking about this part as the final battle because like as i was watching it i was like oh my god I love this I can't wait to talk about this like I specifically there's one very Jurassic Park scene when they are like in front of like you you, you already know what I'm talking about like mm-hmm. with the velociraptor type oh, yeah. of thing where yeah. they're hiding behind something and then the creature keeps yeah. walking behind yeah. them and they're it, it's a stress it was exactly it's Jurassic straight, Park, out right? Jurassic, <laughs> it was straight out of Jurassic Park yeah it's great um, and like I was watching and thinking about that and thinking about how like I mean it's jumping ahead a little but how like it was so cool that the kids are getting their first kill at the same time because it's you know well, yeah. they're building it together and it's it's a it's their coming of age it's growing up and it's so cool they're gonna be on the same page and they're do du- their dueling stories are melding together and thinking about all of that and then i suddenly see you written and directed by john krasinski and i was like oh wait and then suddenly everything in my mind just totally uh-huh. flip-flopped and changed itself for for the better i mean i loved it but i mean this this whole final battle sequence was so amazing and cool and i epic epic is is exactly the perfect word from i mean things like that to when they do finally get to um putting the frequency onto the radio and it blasts out and then we're all saved um to the you know the uh the dual imaging of both the brother and the sister like kind of walking toward um, the creature as it's just slowly being tortured and deteriorating right before they do their first like actual kill. Yeah. Like it, I mean, I mean, we can just talk for the rest of us about the, I mean, the last like 20 minutes of this movie, because it is just epic. Absolutely well, epic. Yeah. There's a big important detail here that I, I, I don't know that everybody's going to pick up on, but I certainly did. Go ahead. And I think it's, another reason why i find the movie to be so brilliant is Mm -hmm. um so yeah you got the daughter like you were saying she's doing her thing and then on the other side of this you got the son who's doing his thing Mm -hmm. um the son shoots the monster right Mm -hmm. but he shoots the monster you know he uses the radio obviously too which is great um but you know he shoots the monster why to protect Evelyn, Emily Blunt's character, which I think back to the first movie uh, when Krasinski or Lee was taking the son hunting. Remember that? And then Emily, uh, yeah. Evelyn says he, he didn't want to go, remember? Uh-huh. And Evelyn says, you have to go so you can protect me protect when the- I'm mm-hmm. old and gray. And while she wasn't old and gray, she was weak it in was the moment. It was still to protect them. It exactly. was symbolic of that in a way. And I was mm-hmm. like, this i think this is uh something to look at too for the yeah. for the third movie because the son's arc i think is more important than we realize i think that he is oh, also 100%. going to step up and be uh, a hero by the end of this third film as well and i mm-hmm. think a lot of the focus might think actually be driven yeah. toward him more than i think that's going to be a little thought. bit of the purpose i think that's going to be a little bit of the purpose of the third one to kind of you know make him as well just as much as the sister the, yeah the if heroes. not more so maybe because yeah you know it correct me if i'm wrong he is like the final shot too i'm pretty sure the final shot is the sun and then it like goes to john i, Krasinski. Think, you're I think i right. think so and i think there's a reason behind this and and um, yeah i think you're right yeah but the fact that you know this this horror franchise pulls things like that and brings it forward to this to where it just has this massive meaning to it is just unbelievable like that yeah. i don't i, I want to stress this point that uh to to anybody who wants to make horror movies out there it's okay to be more than just horror you know uh spielberg knew please that. the best ones are more than just horror spielberg please, understood for the love that, of god and john krasinski understands that you know it, it's just stephen king understands that people yeah. like 
there's so much yeah. more to it and it's just i for me i think that uh again this is what made the movie i think is this big I, so much of the movie obviously is what makes it great but this mm -hmm. if if it wasn't for this ending i i wouldn't have appreciated it as much as i did and by the way mm -hmm. marco beltrami's score by the way is fire like it's so good in the end fire here. and like he because he takes that a uh, quiet place theme that we're used to and then he just like builds on it to mm -hmm. make it feel more epic here at the end and I, I i love that so much and it does just what the rest of the movie does yeah builds yeah. upon the first one and just makes it epic and yeah. grand but also the same yeah but i think that the sun here in this instance and i could be wrong again like uh, this this franchise is kind of a series of it can go either way like i said um but like yes. i think that the idea here is that the son is our luke skywalker in a way you know he kind of he starts out as this you know kind of wuss character you know but then yeah. at the, at the uh, middle chapter he steps up to try to be the hero and i think that that's mm -hmm. kind of a result of what we're seeing here a little bit and, and the third one he takes takes the sword upon himself and yeah. goes into battle i think yeah. i think we're seeing the hero's journey which is brilliant a little bit 100 yeah. percent. yeah no 100 percent. because honestly like i uh, leaving this movie i was like so the daughter's the yeah. main character right this is her this is her story but similarly with i really think the third one has that potential too because it, it left off the second one with that spark of like oh no this 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 is his story too this is he this is his coming of age as well he yeah. is not just like you know the anxious yeah. sibling like he's the main character also this is his story as well he's protecting people he's growing he's yeah. aging he's you know he's yeah. living this too yeah so i think yes there's a real opportunity in the third one i think and uh, to do that there's gotta be i keep saying third one and i'm like it's not confirmed but like it has to be yeah. right it right. just has to be right and then you know in classic uh empire strikes back uh fashion i mean stories a b and c all came together here at the end and then they became mm -hmm. one story and um, exactly yeah I, I i just loved it i i i loved everything about this movie it was mm -hmm. just you know um brilliant uh storytelling brilliant everything i mean i know um people don't think that this is krasinski's original idea because he didn't he shared the writing credit on the first one right but really it is like the only thing he mm -hmm. took from the first one was the concept of you know if you make noise these creatures will get you actually if you listen to him talk about it the first script was not good he changed everything about it to make yeah. it his original idea and it wasn't then, like a family story like that right like it was just no, kind of no there was no what family if the world aspect. was like it this. was like yeah this it was just the only thing it that didn't have the perspective it. on it yeah. that he gave right the only thing he took from it, it, it is really the is idea. it's yeah Sorry, and it, it, re it really is it's these films are from john krasinski's perspective like right. they truly are and mm -hmm. for, for the better like that's like an incredible feat for or i mean i feel like if i like if i wrote and directed a movie and somebody said like this movie is just has their perspective and their voice all over it i'd be like perfect job completed i did what i set out to do and he does that here like it it really you really tell this is a this is a father writing about and for his children yeah that's i mean that's the whole thing over it and accessorized with an incredible science fiction horror concept that you then add on top of the the craftsmanship of the writing and mm -hmm. the genre fiction of it all and i say genre fiction because it is very different than like writing regular fiction or regular comedy yeah. or drama to write within genre and things like you know star wars is obviously the big one or even like lord of the yeah. rings to yeah, write yeah. within genre like horror like science fiction like suspense that, that's a whole another ball game game that's a whole another set of writing rules that you now adhere to or can break as you please and he does so like ma master class is the word i keep thinking of like i i would show this to any film student i show you this to any film student and try to tell them what's wrong with it you're like some parts are a little convenient mm -hmm. that that and that is it that yeah. is it if you're being really nitpicky other than that it does everything perfectly like but i feel you can analyze these movies for in every department in every single aspect of the movie every person's you can go through every job that was needed to make this movie and be like oh so they're perfect they they got it they understood it they were doing 
the most A plus job they could yeah. possibly do. But convenience comes from, I think, what this film is inspired by too, because um, if you get nitpicky about Indiana Jones or Raiders of the Lost Ark, mm -hmm. it's, it's a exactly. perfect film, but there's convenience. You know, any right. any of these movies that I listed in what I call the top tier of filmmaking, there's always convenience. It's just, um, is your convenience getting in the way of your stakes? Mm -hmm. I right. think that's the pro. I think that's what you gotta weigh out when you're making a film. It just in general, it doesn't have to be a certain type of film. Just in general, when you're making a film, does your convenience get in the way of your stakes? And, and he didn't right. let it get in the way of the stakes. Again, like I said, the threat, it's still out there. We're, we still feel the threat being out there. Um, and I, yeah, I just, I think that's a really, um, yeah, it, it's a, it's just, it's a massive, it's filmmaking one-on-one on the screen here. I mean, yeah. that's the best I way I could put this. It was kind of like what you were just saying too. It's, it, it's filmmaking one-on-one on the screen mm -hmm. and you know, I know that I'm not saying that like everybody should be able to do it. Everybody shouldn't be able to do it. If everybody could do it, it it would be done every day. But I think it would, that it would be dumb too if everybody could do it. Exactly. It wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be good. Right. But yeah. it I think that there's something to be said too about the fact that again, and at least in my opinion, maybe other people can think of films that do this for them, but in my opinion, it's been twenty three, maybe some odd years since we've had a film uh act in this way or, or be as great as this one is in my at least general opinion and i think that says a lot about the studio system like we should be getting one of these at least once every six years i feel like instead of once every you know 20 some odd years at least again my right. opinion every generation my opinion but i think that this yeah. is just one of these movies that it's for everybody everybody can sit down enjoy the themes enjoy the story enjoy the suspense you know i think that um, because I, 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 Sammy, I think you can speak to this too, because you're not a big, like horror movie person, but this is like the, mm -hmm. what Krasinski does so brilliantly is what Spielberg did so brilliantly is he expands horror to the masses and he makes sure that, ev makes sure that everybody can go in and remember this one for the rest of their lives. You're going to remember this theater experience for the rest of your life. And this is going to be one of the ones that you, uh, tell your kids about maybe one day is, is, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it is a quiet place part too. Like I'll never forget the day i got to see this one and the th you know what i mean and and i think yeah. that that's a big deal there's a lot to be said about that and the fact that again we don't get more films like this is a problem but again i don't expect everybody to be able to do it if if everybody could do it then a film like this wouldn't be as special as it is when it does mm -hmm. come along too so i i, I guess I, I i'm just saying that i think there needs to be a balance in hollywood um between no, this type of thing yeah and yeah and I think the, for me, the distinction between like what I, is the actual kind of what, what makes it great about it is that it, it so many times with these movies, it's so much like, like I'll use Transformers for an example, like Transformers is very yeah. much like the premise. Isn't it so cool that these are alien Transformers in their cars? Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? Don't you want to watch them punch each other? Isn't that cool? Yeah. And then you strip all of that away and you're like, okay, so it's a story about like a boy gaining like a little bit of confidence, I guess, and getting a girlfriend. You're like, okay, what's so special about that? Nothing. There's nothing special about that. But with things like A Quiet Place and like E.T. and Jaws and Jurassic Park, like you were saying, is that when you take away all of the kind of accessorization that's there, like if you take all of the aliens and all that stuff out of A Quiet Place, what do you have? You have an incredible family story about what it means to to lose your apparent and to step up and a coming of age story yeah. within that. That's what you have. That's where I think the distinction is. We get so caught up in the the having a really good premise and you know the the first pitch of your movie being absolutely like phenomenal is blowing people away like i can't just say it's a good family story i have to be like well it's just aliens and blah 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 all of the stuff when and when that's not that's not what it actually is that's what we all think it is because it's dressed up that way and we're visual people so we see and we see it as like oh horror movie right but when you actually sit back and this sounds a little pretentious, but genuinely, like when you actually sit back and look at it, it it's not that way. It's not just the horror movie or suspense movie or sci-fi movie. It's not just aliens killing people. It's 
a family story. Yeah. It's an actual good story with good themes and morals and plot with incredible acting and all of that stuff as well. Like, yeah. uh, it's just, it's the, it, it all comes down to what are the bones of it? Like, yes, you can have incredible, you can dress it up really pretty, but what are the bones? Yeah. That's really what, where the greatness it, truly lies. It doesn't feel like somebody trying to make one of these top tier movies again. It doesn't somebody feel like somebody trying to right. repeat it. It just feels like somebody just did make it it just did mm -hmm. carry on the legacy rather than you know there's not i i think i think there is a thing to trying too hard you know i think in hollywood too i think that yeah. that's the problem and and like it's why we don't get more of these is because everybody's trying too hard everybody's caught up in well that works so this has to work it's like no stop and think a second try to come up with something a little bit new and, and you know mm -hmm. and, and and you know uh, bruce campbell had a great line he was talking at one of these uh comic-con things and uh somebody had asked him um about you know what what's the key to filmmaking and um he said don't try to copy anybody else he's like don't try to be derivative don't worry you'll get derivative but you got to start mm -hmm. trying not to be derivative right and that's exactly the, what we see. You can be inspired by those people, but don't copy those people. That's the difference. Right. And it, it evolves into something that's derivative of it. But mm -hmm. you have to start with a concept and, and a base and a foundation that you build off of to become a part of that legacy. And that's mm -hmm. what we saw Krasinski do here, I think, is, yes. is, is he just he started that original movie again which i'll reassess it it might go into that top tier now too because this movie complements the first one so well oh that I'll, God, if i reassess 100%. it 100 percent. i think it might go into the top tier as well i'll let you know but that's the different story but when i'm watching the first movie i'm just like this is super original and amazing i'm not sitting here thinking this is one of the legacy top tier movies as great as it was and then I see this one and I'm like, this really is some legacy top tier shit. And I think that that's, um, again, like, like I said, he, he got derivative because he mm -hmm. started out original. And I think that that's right. important, uh, for all filmmakers out there from any walks of life, take that advice. Don't start derivative. You'll get derivative. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. that's, that's how I summed that up. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, absolutely. A hundred and ten million percent. I'm trying to think. I I mean same all around. <laughs> I, I echo everything you said. I probably maybe I probably give this about four and a half stars. Just I can't I wouldn't say that it's for me like about a hundred it's not about a hundred percent if I were it, you know what it feels better to give it like a 95 I'll give it a 95 out of a hundred I feel comfortable saying that yeah I can't quite give it a hundred percent but it's still an A plus so I still but like the bear like if an A plus is like in 95 to 100 I give oh, okay. it the 95 a plus I yeah like that. so like just barely yeah. but still there it's still there but cool. barely but cool. it's, it's still with, the, with, the, with those players still right. makes that same grade great um i mean yeah it's again like you said it's a it's a master class in directing writing acting sound design yeah um production design like we've talked about a storytelling filmmaking all of it it's just it, if you're a filmmaker and you don't watch a quiet place like you're doing yourself a, dis a disservice by not studying every single frame of yeah. that movie because that is that is exactly how you do it that's yeah. how you make a good solid genre piece of fiction that is how you do it people yeah um, yeah, I don't have anything much else. You got anything, any final thoughts? I mean, the only thing I'll say is, stuff? like, I don't grade films, but I guess going off of your logic, that that's, I guess, where I would be, too, you know? Because it's, yeah. like I said, it's in the top tier, but it's not as good as Jurassic Park and Jaws, but it's amongst it's the ranks e right. of those, you it's know? It's probably, I mean? like, listed last in the top tier, but still on top it tier It broke the top tier. Probably probably like something last. finally did break the top tier, uh, you know? Uh, yeah. But... You know, I mean, the way I graded it on my channel is it's a rush out and see ASAP. Oh, my gosh. That's Absolutely. Uh, that's the best way I could put it. And please do. Exactly. Go to the movies. It's If you are vaccinated, it is very safe. It, I had a great time. We were all very spaced out as well. There wasn't like the two seats next to mine were blocked off. No one could even buy them. Yeah. 
it it's an incredible yeah, time same, to get same some popcorn. Mine. I'll, I'll second that. Same at mine. Yeah. Although our recliners were broken, so mm-hmm. we had to move two down. Oh no! And uh, I was just like, oh no! I was like, yeah, exactly. You could have recliners. Was... The recliners were nice. Yeah, I love, we love recliners. Yeah. It was cold in there. Like it was just. It was such a nice time. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I, 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 lo- so, I love yeah. the theater, and um, you know. I, I just think that this was such a great way for me to go back. The funny enough, the last movie I saw in the theater was Empire Strikes Back, and uh, nice. here we are. Uh, I feel like <laughs> I'm watching Empire 2.0, really, because it's the best sequel, in my opinion, since mm-hmm. that movie. And um, yeah, I came home, I put on Jurassic Park, and I'll tell you, it makes a great double feature. Yeah. You put on Jurassic Park, I also, and you're done with this. Yeah. Something just popped into my head, too, that also I think it's so important that we remember how much of from John Krasinski's perspective this movie is. Like, that's yeah. also what, we, what I mean, or what I understand it to mean when people say don't copy people. Yeah. Because so many times what makes these things so great is because it's coming from their unique direct perspective and like unless you lived their life exactly the same way they did you do not have that perspective so you need like i think of like other great new horror movies like get out but again and great again like comedy people for some reason just really understand how to make a great horror movie um but same with like get out it's that movie is so great because it feels like nobody else could have made that movie Mm -hmm. it's such a unique perspective that it's it couldn't have come from anywhere else it came right. from it came from the only place it could have and that's why it's so good and so perfect right like the, the again because the perspective of you know him as a father working through his parenting and writing it to his children through these movies that's such a unique experience mm-hmm. that and it's so specific to him and how yeah. he's going to write it yeah. that you can't copy that you can maybe try but you're going to have to use your own different experiences and therefore the material is going to be so much more yeah. different yeah but yeah uh, i think that's really important to remember but i i mean anything else real quick yeah last last quick thing uh, last quick thing because we are really pressed for time but last quick yeah. thing yeah. um is the one thing i wanted to say is i just find it fascinating that you know um we're getting this story about, um, in a way, unlikely heroes, and in my opinion, John Krasinski uh, parallels that because he is kind of an unlikely hero in the sense mm-hmm. that he's um, he's going to be a big reason why we're going back to the movies. And again, he broke that mold of, to me anyway, the top tier type film again. And and you know who to thunk that Jim from the Office would do this one day, right. but it, he's had an incredible journey, and I, I love watching him uh, evolve as a as a talent, and uh, that, I think that that's one of the more fascinating things and i feel like i didn't have that attachment to him as a talent and as a human um maybe the appreciation wouldn't be as high but i'm gonna give credit to people that i believe are good people and and Mm -hmm. you know uh, genuinely uh work hard and i that's the last thing i actually want to say here before i end it is i think again i told you i couldn't put my finger on the common thread between all my top tier movies but i actually think that if i could say if i if i could describe it it's that the hard work is on the screen and i think that that's the common thread between my top tier movies the hard work is on the screen and i think right. krasinski's hard work is on the screen here and that, that's all i'll say we'll wrap there yeah <laughs> no i know what you mean it's like when the when the work can speak for itself yeah. when such hard work and dedication was put in that the thing now speaks for itself because it was I guess loved so much. Hundred percent. Yeah. You know, it was loved so much as a child, but now that it's out in the world as an adult, yep. it's just perfect. Agreed. Agreed. It's that exactly. <laughs> no, yeah, a hundred percent. Um. So yeah, with that, guys, we are going to get out of here. Um. So thank you so much for watching uh, this episode of Movie Night on the Anorex Entertainment Podcast. Um. Uh, you guys can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Anorex Official. Um, and you can also listen to us on Spotify. So please head on over there. Be sure to leave a review, like us if you feel so inclined to do so. Um, we also have merch. That is the link right above my head. It is merch.streamelements.com. Oh, it's over here. Over there. Dot com. <laughs> Am I pointing in the right direction yeah, now? Good. Cool. <laughs> merch.streamelements.com slash anorax is where you can get that merch. We got shirts, we got hoodies, we got mugs go check out see if there's anything you like we'd really appreciate that um i am sammy ramirez and dom where can the people find you i was gonna give right. my social first but i was like twitter, you should do first on twitter at dom underscore martino underscore and on instagram dom underscore martino underscore official 
Perfect. A lot of underscores. Just remember that people. Um, and I am at Sammy Ramirez 14 over on Instagram and at Sammy Ramirez on Twitter. Uh, so yeah, we will see you guys next week for another movie night. And later in this week, we're going to have uh, our regular news shows on Tuesday and Thursday. And then we will see you back on Monday with the review about Cruella. I am so excited to yeah. see that movie. Excited to talk about it. And we will be talking about it next week. So hopefully we'll see you then. Have a great night, guys. Bye. Night.